I want us to move uh, straight away and look at uh, what we are calling theoretical probability. Theoretical probability. Theoretical. Theoretical probability. Now, uh, viewers and learners, we have looked at experimental probability, and now we are looking at theoretical probability. So experimental probability was in our last class, but in this class we are dealing with theoretical probability. So from this, there is something we can see, that uh, the basic differentiation of probability only gives us two types of probability. Either you are dealing with experimental probability or you are dealing with theoretical probability. Now, in experimental probability, uh, we agreed that this is probability based on our past experiences or from an experiment. In other words, if we are completely new in a given situation, we may not find the probability. For example, uh, I gave you an example in the last class. If you are in Kenya now, and you've never been to Kenya, and you've not read anywhere, and you've not done any experiment, it is almost impossible to know whether it will rain in June. But if you have experience of being a Kenyan, and you've also read and you have data to back up, then you can find that it is probable it will rain in June. In such a case, your probability is based on experiment and experience, therefore experimental. Otherwise, there are situations where we don't have to do an experiment to know of a probability. For instance, consider, consider two coins are thrown one after the other, one after the other. So consider two coins thrown one after the other. Uh, allow me to clean here for now. I believe we've all seen what we are supposed to do today. Now we can come up with a, a small table to show that. So we can say in our table that... Um, we can have that, and then we can say this is the first coin, like that. We can also go ahead and say that this is the second coin, coin like that. Uh, we can therefore go ahead like that and say that in the first coin, we expect a head and also a tail. Yes, and we can say that in the second coin, we also expect a head and also a tail, like that. Yes, and then we can do this that way. So, in such a scenario, we are trying to consider this. Now, we are considering two coins thrown one after the other. So, from this we can say that the first coin can give us a head, and the second coin also gives us a head. Or, the first coin can give us a tail, like that, and the second coin also give, gives us a head. Or, the first coin can give us a head, and the second coin gives us a, a tail, like that. Or, the first coin can give us a tail, and the second coin gives us a tail as well. So when we look at this, uh, let our interest be here. Let that be our interest. Uh, those of us who can immediately connect will know that what I have surrounded is actually a sample, or what we normally also call probability space. Somebody can see that this is a probability space. Now, I want us to realize that we've come up with this total number of likely outcomes without doing any experiment. Because 
we expect that when we throw a coin, there are only two chances. Either a head or a tail is coming up. And we don't have to do an experiment for this. Now, when we look at that, therefore, we know that this is actually something we can get the answer to. We can get probability without having to do an experiment or have an experience. In such case that you can have a probability without having to do an experiment is what we are calling theoretical probability. For instance, from this, from this, from above, what is what is the probability? What is the probability that one will get a head and a tail in that order? So in this situation, we'll now come to our sample space and find that head tail in that order is only one. Here it is. So the probability is one. Over the total number of outcome in our sample space is one, two, three, four. So that probability is a quarter. And we can see that we've done this without having to do an experiment. So when you are able to find a probability without doing an experiment or relying on past experiences, that is what we are calling theoretical probability. That is what we are calling theoretical probability. Now, we can therefore say that in uh, brief, in brief, uh, we can write this other side. In brief, therefore, we can give which we do that. In brief, when you are looking at theoretical probability, uh, the probability, the probability of an event, of an event occurring, an event is equal to Total number of favorable outcomes, of favorable outcomes, outcomes divided by total number of all outcomes in the sample space. Outcomes. So, total number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of all outcomes.